a lot has been going on lately. And to be honest, I am a little overwhelmed. <laughs> So to be honest, I haven't really done much with the dash on the Explorer other than just fill in a few spots with more of that putty. But uh, all of this stuff back here is trim from inside of my house because I'm getting ready to put in tile floor and we decided to repaint the walls. So that's going on. Um, and then the other day, the check engine light came on on the F-150. And yesterday I'm driving the excursion and I noticed the check engine lights on it too. Um, but to be honest, the engine light on the excursion has been on for a while. It's just when I scanned it, it wasn't really something that was super important at the time. Wasn't really worried about it, but I forgot what that was. So I need to figure that out again. Um, also, I've got a little bit of a steering issue still on the excursion. It still feels like it's all over the road. I'm going to try and do something to tighten the steering up just a little bit there I'm hoping there's an adjustment on the steering box we can get to that but I want to check and see if there's any other loose parts uh, which there shouldn't be but you never know and I've also the cooling fan is stuck on so I need to replace the clutch on that but I don't have the parts for it so I got to get those ordered and we'll get that another day but we can check the engine lights so let's grab my handy dandy little scanner and uh, we'll figure this out, starting with the excursion. Turn the key on. Apparently my wife is ecstatic that her football team is getting Aaron Rodgers. Okay. All right, vehicle diagnostics. You raised the data in the previous, yes, yes, yes. Let's read the codes. We have a P0300, which is a random slash multiple cylinder misfire detected. And that is the only one showing that is actually going on. So let's write that down. P0300, oh. Uh, no pending codes, thank God. So there's P0300, multiple misfire. What that could be right now, haven't the slightest idea. It could be anything from vacuum leak, uh, could be, I probably got, a, a, well, no, the coils are new. So it's highly unlikely that one of the coils is bad, but yeah, they were cheap coils. It could be that. So that's gonna take some digging, but what I'm gonna do right now, just for fun, is I'm gonna erase that code. Command sent back. Start this thing up and see if the engine light. Yep, engine light's off. So we'll see if that comes back on in the next couple of days. If it does, then I got to dig into it deeper. Yay. So now, let's grab the keys for the F-150. And since this is my daily driver, and the last time the check engine light was on, it was for a misfire on cylinder number three, but that was the day I bought it. So, and the dealer fixed it for me back then. So I'm hoping that it's something different this time. Let's go ahead and... Shut the door, shut the door. All right. Plugging this in. F-150 codes. Vehicle diagnostics, erase from the previous one. Read codes. P0301, cylinder one misfire detected. That bugs me because these particular engines, uh, or especially the EcoBoost ones, the EcoBoost engines have a cam phaser issue that can cause a misfire and it usually sits on number one. So 
what I could do. And well, it could also be a bad coil because I did not replace the coils when I replaced the spark plugs. So I'm gonna have to dig into that and see what's going on with it. But it doesn't rattle when you first start it up, which means to tell me that the cam phasers are okay because when the cam phasers go out, they usually make a really, really loud, annoying rattle that makes it sound like a diesel engine. Um, so your scanner got those codes extremely quick. I need to use that for my truck and see what's wrong with it. Your truck? Yes. Your, your Dodge? Yes. I think I know exactly what's wrong with it. Oh my. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's not good. It's got a hole in the frickin' block. <laughs> All right, so as far as the excursion goes, that P0300 multiple cylinder misfire problem thing, I do believe is being caused by this little rubber hose I got back here. Okay, it goes to the intake from what, uh, somewhere over there but it's allowing unmetered air to get in because it's all cracked up tore apart it's not looking so good so i'm gonna go ahead and go to o'reilly's and get another one of those to replace that hopefully that'll take care of the misfire problem and as far as the steering goes uh, i've got the steering box by blue top not too long ago actually back in april and yeah, there's a way that I could adjust it, but it's still under warranty. Uh, today is Sunday. Uh, can't get a hold of anybody there today. So I'm gonna call them tomorrow and see what it is I gotta do to have that exchanged out. If they're not willing to exchange it because, well, the truck's lifted, then um, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and try and adjust it. And if that doesn't work, then I'm just gonna have to order another box, unfortunately. So that's all we got going for the excursion right now okay oh i forgot to mention yesterday while going to the city with my family uh this piece fell off <laughs> well it didn't it didn't fall off uh it just kind of came apart i've actually still got it in the back here <laughs> ow just hit my head so yeah i've still got it sitting back here but uh i was planning on taking those off anyway um, including these because I just don't like the way they look and plus I plan on just sanding this whole thing down and probably just gonna do a Raptor liner on the whole thing which would make it just look absolutely awesome and even more mean and epic and yeah so eventually I'll get to the point where I'm just gonna take all of these off get all of this old adhesive crap off of here and then just sand it down little by little and start spraying it now, the F-150, cylinder one misfire. There's a culmination of things that it could possibly be, which, and it's kind of bugging me because, yeah, I should have replaced the coils when I did the spark plugs, and now I'm kicking myself for it because I'm, I'm kind of in that area of the unknown. Is it the coil pack? I don't know. It, could it be a cam phaser? It's possible. It could be an early sign that the cam phaser's letting go, which I'm hoping it's not because that's actually a, gonna be a pain in the ass to fix. Um, unfortunately, my little scanner, it's just a cheap $100 model that I bought from AutoZone, God, almost 15 years ago, it was around there, and it's more than paid for itself, but it doesn't allow me to read a whole lot of data off of it. Like I can't go in and see the electrical signals from the cam sensors. I can't go in and see the actual electrical signal from the throttle body. I, I can't read into all of that. I really, really wish I had a cool Snap-on or Matco scanner that could show me all of that stuff, but they're so expensive and I just can't justify spending that much money on it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll get on Rock Auto, order the, uh, I'll, order, I'll go ahead and order six brand new coils order the fan clutch for the excursion. But today we're gonna go to O'Reilly's and get that one piece, switch that out. And uh, I'm just gonna have to ride around with my check engine light on for a while and hopefully it doesn't get worse. The next day. Okay, so it's the next day. Uh, 
some things came up and we kind of put filming to the to the side and uh got that piece replaced on the excursion that little rubber hose turns out it goes to the pcv valve uh got that replaced cleared the engine light on this uh my wife drove it around i drove it around and the engine light came back on immediately no good uh but however um this morning i get in my truck to go to work and uh well this happened oh, what the fuck now it's off Ugh. yeah um, but I did order a new ignition coil, just one for now, for cylinder number one. Um, if it comes back, I will replace that coil. And if it keeps it off for a long time, then I'll order the other five and we'll just go ahead and call it square. Uh, ordered the fan clutch for the excursion. It's gonna be coming with that coil. And hopefully those will be here Friday. Uh, but I've got some other things going on because I am in the middle of doing some home renovations. Like, uh, I don't know if you saw in the video, we had all of this wood piled up in here and whatnot, but those were like the baseboards. I'm gonna go with all new baseboard, ripped up the floor in my house, we're putting in tile. We repainted a whole bunch of stuff, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been hectic at my place and it's just insane and crazy. But I also, yesterday, I did a little bit more work sanding it down, getting it shaped and on the dash and, and I'm getting there slowly but surely, I'm getting there. Uh, pretty soon we'll I'll be able to test and feel how that uh, material goes on here. Oh, and side note on the excursion and the uh, steering issue, it, it's been all over the road, even after replacing all of those parts. Uh, got to looking at that and there is a considerable amount of play in this brand new steering box. Well, I say new, I bought it in March uh, <laughs> in this steering box. But uh, I'm, I'm talking with Blue Top, the manufacturer of the box to, to see if I can do the adjustments on it without voiding my warranty. If they say, hey, go ahead, it won't void the warranty, you will be good. Then I'll go ahead and try and do some adjustments myself. And uh, if it ends up that's not gonna be a good thing, then we might have to swap the units out and that'll just be more things for me to show you. <laughs> and as I was recording that video, my phone went off to let me know an email came in. It was Blue Top saying it will not void the warranty if I make that adjustment. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot right now. And to make that adjustment is down there. See this blue piece right here? There's this nut and then the center shaft of that. I can loosen this nut up and turn it clockwise about, oh, three quarters of a turn to one full turn and uh, that should tighten up the slop in this box. Hopefully that'll take care of that. And hopefully I can get this done before I gotta go pick up my kid from daycare. All right, so I did about three quarters of a turn on that shaft and hopefully that's gonna work out. I mean, it, it even just sitting in the driveway, I haven't driven it yet, but even just sitting in the driveway, it feels better. So I'll take it for a spin when I go to pick up my son and uh, then we'll see how that feels. And hopefully it's a lot better because I've spent way too much money, way too much time and labor on this thing for it to be driving the way that it does. <sighs> yeah, it definitely feels better at low speeds. Uh, just got just a little bit of, just a, just a tiny, tiny amount. So I'll probably go, probably another quarter turn, maybe even, maybe even a half and it should be good. I think I'm gonna have to just cut this video short here. Uh, I do appreciate y'all watching. Um, we do have a Facebook page, we do have a TikTok, and we do have an Instagram. Well, I have an Instagram. Um, so if you wanna go and follow those, that'd be awesome. I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.